Hi everybody, John here again. Um, it's my next follow-up to records that I've bought um, in the second part of this year, 2018 or 2018, as some say. Um, this video I'm going to focus on rock, um, which is yeah quite a wide genre, I suppose. I've got some hard and sort of heavy metal stuff, but also some average, uh, well not average, but you know, classic rock, I suppose you should say. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but this is what I'm playing. Uh, it's actually on my computer at the moment. Um, this is Wall Spain. I'm going to talk more about this in a short while. I'll come back to that. But first of all, I'm going to show this record. This is um, a Hungarian band called Locomotive GT. I understand their name has been abbreviated before called uh, to LGT. Um, online they seem to be kind of listed and, and sort of categorized as being progressive rock. Um, I think that's really strange because I wouldn't really call this progressive rock at all. Um, some of the some of the music has kind of got that sort of funky groove that you may find, for instance, in bands like Leonard Skinner. Um, there's a lot of energy and a lot of fun in the music, which again doesn't say to me progressive rock. Um, I'm going to do a needle drop of this um, for you to see what I mean. Uh, they have a bit of an unusual band. I, I don't think they ever really took off in their home country, uh, Hungary. Um, not <clears throat> not that much, although I understand that they they're often credited as being influential in their home country, but. I don't think they were really particularly huge. So this album, <coughs> it's a, I suppose you'd call it a compilation. It's, it's sort of a, as I understand it, it's the record that was put together by tracks from the first three albums, uh, basically to break the, uh, you know, break the ice in uh, outside of Hungary, and. Um, I understand that some of the records they sing in Hungarian. This is all in English. Um, it's an unusual record. It's fun to listen to. I think uh, you'd be disappointed if you thought you were going to hear, you know, what most of us would consider being progressive rock. Um, but uh, it doesn't make it a bad record. Uh, interesting little find that. <laughs> Doctor says, hey, yo, get out, your ticket has expired. I don't mind in any case, my home's the other side. Fox of songs from my window to Sunday afternoon. They are dancing both of them with a girl who's getting show this is the birds um, it's actually their second album um, reissued this one in 1977 and that's why it's got this different cover it's a British reissue it's on um, CBS Funnily enough, you know, I, I stumbled across this 
um, around about the time when I can't remember what his name is, is a VC YouTube guy who sort of idolizes the birds. I don't think he had it at a birds contest. And I remember writing to somebody um, in the notes about how here in the UK you just don't see the birds anywhere, you know, for whatever reason their records um, are very scarce. Um, um, yeah, within days I stumbled upon this, so I, I seized it and I did. It cost me very much. I think I paid about three or four pounds for it, I suppose. Um, and it's yeah, it's actually the first album by the birds that I had. I think I have a CD compilation somewhere, but um, no, this is the first album by them. And I'm, I, I suspected when I bought it that it was just a you know a best of type thing. Um, I was actually quite happy to find out that you know, actually it's their second album. So, yeah, there you go. I've been enjoying this. I um, haven't played it for a while since I got it. I got it fairly, sort of, you know, uh, early on in the summer. Um, but uh, definitely one to, for me to really invest some time into. The next record I'm going to show is this. This is Cosmic Wheels with Donovan. Um, I understand this is often labelled as being called uh, Donovan's um, glam rock record. Um, oh, this was, I'm quite happy to find this. Um, you see a lot of Donovan records around, particularly his earlier ones. Well, occasionally. You know. um, this is a gatefold. It's the original pressing. And there are some bits on here that I would say yeah that is very very sleeve very glam rock but I think it would be a mistake to think that it's all gonna be <coughs> you know slave music. Um, if anything there's a little bit of a nod <coughs> excuse me if anything there's a little bit of a nod to uh, Mark Bonin and T Rex I think but it goes beyond that. <coughs> Coughing fit there. Uh, also in this uh, in this uh, gatefold is this poster thing. Ooh, quite nice. Very happy with that. That's the uh, lyrics on the back. Um, it's quite nice to see you know lyrics and things like this printed in a. Uh, a type size that's you know legible to to all. So many times you see these lyrics and things sort of set in such ridiculous small type size that you can't really read it. Um, so yeah, it's a good record. I'm really happy to have found this, and I'm really happy that it's in great shape. Again, I paid probably about four pounds for this. Um, I actually found. Actually, the last two records of this record I found in the same place um, at separate times. So I do pop into that place now and again because you never know what's going to turn up there. Um, this record I bought at a car boot sale. Um, it's free at last, my free. Um, I understand it's not necessarily their strongest album. In fact, um, I, don't, I don't know a huge amount of, about Free, but I do know that this was one that they made uh, towards the sort of the end of the band when they were crumbling. I think they'd already split up and reformed uh, out of courtesy to um, uh, who was it now? One of the band members that was. Uh, suffering with some sort of drug addiction and um, yeah it's kind of a melancholy record um, so but it was a good find um, I paid in great shape I paid three pound for this in a car boot sale and the man that was selling them selling it he had Lots of records, similar kind of you know uh, types of records, 
um, he had loads, but I just didn't have that much money on me, like uh, I seldom do when I go to this car boot sale. And I, I liked what he had in his box, and he was telling me that he had loads more at home. Apparently, I don't know, somebody had given to him, and he didn't know the value of them, but somebody had told him that you know, he could be charging a few pounds each sort of thing. Um, and he froze, and I asked if I could get his number, because I don't have any more chains now, but I'd be really interested in buying some more records off you. So he froze around in his van, sort of a white van guy, and uh, yeah, found a bit of paper, and he wrote me his... Uh, name and address and phone number down and uh, I thought well excellent I'll uh, I'll contact him next week and uh, arrange a time when I can go around to see his box of records and hopefully find something but uh, I didn't well, I can't remember why there was something came along something came along you know life happened and I got distracted from that I, I didn't get the opportunity to call them and then yeah, maybe a week or two went by and I'd sort of forgotten about it. And then maybe like a month or so afterwards I remembered, oh yeah, that guy, I bought that free record, I was going to call him. And I'd sort of... <laughs> I just have to let that slip away. I mean, maybe he still has them, I don't know, but... Yeah, you can't keep on, can you really? But uh, yeah, so this was a good find for £3. I didn't have it. I'd, slowly putting together my free collection so uh, yeah, that's a good contribution to that <clears throat> uh, another really good find that I'm happy to have made this year so this is uh, I don't speak Spanish tres hombres I guess three men by ZZ Top um, this came from Look at that gatefold. This came from a charity shop in Penarth. Um, I think I paid about one one pound fifty for it. Um, really great shape. Really happy to have got it. Um, got the original inner sleeve. Beautiful shape. There you go. Yeah, very happy to have found that. Um, the good thing about the ZZ Top is that you know they had a they had a big stint before they kind of really become big stadium rock fillers type people. Uh, they had a good stint of making some really very very good records. Um, this is one of them. Um, the first ZZ Top album that I actually ever had was on cassette called Tejas and I was confused I remember being a young kid having that and listening to it and enjoying it but I was confused about how it sounded so different from you know the ZZ top numbers you were hearing on la on, on the on the telly or the radio like um, uh, you know Eliminator and Afterburner that sort of thing and um, yeah it took a while for me to understand okay yeah they'd had this sort of big breakthrough and a big expensive producer to make that record and uh, they kind of made the formula and went on continuing making pretty much the same record over and over again afterwards. Uh, before that they were a really good bluesy sort of rock band I think and um, yeah this is a good representation of that. Next I'm going to show is this. This is uh, an album uh, again from a charity shop. I paid a pound for this vintage magnum. Um, it's a sort of a compilation of early songs um, and early live recordings. Magnum is sort of, I think, falls sort of somewhere in that uh, early new wave of British heavy metal thing, in, right in their early days. And in some of these live recordings, you can hear, uh, yeah, a bit more of a sort of a metal edge to them. I mean, they've always been a very melodic band. I know that uh, Cloudy Mile, though, is a very, very big fan of Magnum. Um, I've got a few of their records purely because they've always been sort of labelled as being fairly proggy. I don't really know if they are proggy. Um, to a certain level, I suppose. But they kind of straddle that territory between prog and uh, 
metal and classic rock somehow. Um, I wouldn't really know how to label them. I'm not always the biggest fan of them. I have to be in the right frame. But this is a really good record, and I was so happy to find it for a pound. I didn't know it existed. You know, it's always great when you stumble upon something in a dusty old charity shop and pay next to nothing for it. And it's one that you, you just didn't know about. So uh, I grabbed this one when I saw it. I hadn't had it very long. Um, maybe bought about five, six weeks ago. But uh, when I came home and spun it, I was actually quite impressed. So I'll do a needle drop from this. record I'm going to show in this video is uh, Wolfsbane. It's the second album by Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane on the band um, that Blaze Bailey comes from. He, Blaze Bailey, you know, I'm sure many of us know, is the guy that replaced Bruce Dickinson in Iron Maiden. Um, kind of controversial, I think, because, <clears throat> you know, Bruce Dickinson and Blaze Bailey, they're completely sort of so different in their style and approach and that sort of thing. I get the fact that Iron Maiden kind of recruited him because she was a nice guy with a lot of stamina, you know, really dedicated to what he's doing. Uh, but you wouldn't really list him as someone that's got this fantastic uh, voice uh, like Bruce Dickinson has. And it's nowhere near being a, the, the air raid show, siren that uh, Bruce Dickinson is. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of fans were probably a little bit disappointed when, when Blaze started singing for Iron Maiden. Um, and I know that Wolfsbane were really fed up when he dumped them <laughs> and left them in the lurch and joined Iron Maiden, but uh, that's what he did. Um, yeah, I like Wolfsbane. Their they're songs are very, they've always got this really big hook in them. Uh, and that's, you know, something that grabs my I always like songs that that um, have a, a very sort of big hook in it so that you can stick in your mind and you kind of chew on it for, for a whole day or two. Obviously, you know, you get earworms like that, don't you, which are annoying, but I always find all Spain songs are the opposite. They're just uh, really satisfying um, when, when, you, when that sort of hook gets into your mind a bit. Um, I, I think it's a little bit of a shame about the album cover. It's a bit dark. I think they could have done a better job of that. Uh, so, there's it in the sleeve. There we go. And as always, there on Deaf American. Uh, I think I'll play this video out with uh, a Wolfsbane Spain needle drop and see how we get on. Okay everybody, thanks very much for watching. That's my rock records that I've collected that I haven't had a chance to show in the last six months. Um, look out for my next video. It's probably going to be something about 
prog or maybe jazz. We'll see how we go. Thanks very much. Bye.